Hello everyone, welcome to Baiju's IAS. In the last lecture, we had started this series and we had talked about geography through map part one, where our focus was on international relations. In this lecture, we are going to continue with that and we'll today talk about 10 more places in geography through map part two and again focusing on IER. I hope you would have seen the previous lecture. I hope you would have liked that and let's continue. Now, today, the first place that we have taken, the 11th in the series, it's Khuzestan. As you can see, it's in Iran. It's a province which is in the southwestern part of Iran. Now, why is it important? Because Iran has discovered a new oil field here. Now, you all may say that there is nothing new because Iran is a very rich country when it comes to petroleum. But then the important thing here is that this may turn out to be the second biggest of all the oil fields that Iran has after Ahwaz. So after Ahwaz, the second biggest oil field almost having some 50 billion barrels of crude would be here. Ahwaz, which has the largest, has around 65 billion barrels of crude. So this is a very big, big discovery as far as Iran is concerned. So we should have an idea about that. Moving further, let's look at the 12th place. So now in 12th number, let's talk about Strait of Hormuz. Now Strait of Hormuz, you would have studied a lot many times. You would have heard about it. If you would have read the newspapers in the last year, this place was in news because there were continuous tensions in this region between the western countries US, UK versus Iran. What was this tension about? There was some crisis with regards to the oil tankers being attacked and this had led to a very very critical situation here. Now in this regards, why is Strait of Hormuz so so important? You have to understand, it is one of the busiest ship routes all over the world and at its narrowest, it is only around 21 miles. In lengthwise, it is around 96 miles long and narrowest around only 21 miles. And there also the shipping lanes in both the directions are only around 2 miles. So you can understand that lengthwise the narrow strait that it is, if it is blocked and even this blocking can be done by just occupying a very small stretch of strait. It disrupts the whole ship routes. Now here, the thing is, you can see there was a crisis. It's one of the world's most important ship routes and it's also the busiest sea route for oil. Now one of the things that may be asked about Strait of Hormuz is the countries that surround it. So in the north, you can see it's Iran. And in its south, you have UAE and Oman. Also, you can see the Strait of Hormuz is connecting the Persian Gulf. And in and around Persian Gulf, you have countries like Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq, and also, of course, Iran. So do have an idea about Strait of Hormuz. There are chances that questions may come here. Let's look at point number 13. And now we are going to talk about Bishkek. Now, Bishkek, it is the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Now, Kyrgyzstan, we all know, one of the five countries of Central Asia. So, why was it news? Because the 19th summit of SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, was organized here last year. Now, Kyrgyzstan's capital, formerly it was known as Pishpek City. So, you should remember what was its former name. So, you can see 19th summit of SCO was organized. This is the town, this was known as this earlier and it is the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Here it lies in the Chu River Valley. So just remember SCO's this, why it is also important because we know that SCO's next session is going to happen in our country. So do remember this important from our exams perspective. Let's look at Hong Kong and again this was a place which we all know but it was very much in news in last year because of the wide scale disturbances that have taken place here. Now one of the things that we should remember why these disturbances happened because China was planning to bring a law under which the people could be extradited from Hong Kong 
to mainland China. Now, as you can see in this image, this is China, this is the bigger map and you can see here, this is the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Now, why is this SAR or Special Administrative Region? So, for those who don't know, Hong Kong has a complex history. Until 1997, this area that is Hong Kong was ruled by Britain as a colony. And then around 97, it was returned back to China. But here, China adopted a new thing that is one country, two systems. This sort of arrangement was introduced by China with regards to Hong Kong. So basically, China and Hong Kong, they are one country, but they are having two systems. Under this, the people of Hong Kong have more autonomy and they also have more rights. Now, when China planned to bring this law under which the people could be extradited, it was seen as an interference. At the same time, people in Hong Kong are not very sure till how long this arrangement would continue. Why? Because 97, this was introduced only for 50 years. That is in 2047, this arrangement had to end. That is this autonomy that is granted to Hong Kong at the same time more rights that the people of Hong Kong have all this would have been taken away and people are not really sure what would happen after that so let's look everything is here so as you can see there were protests against China's plan to allow extradition of Hong Kong to mainland China that is if somebody is arrested in Hong Kong that person could be extradited to mainland China also and it is a special administrative region of China Till 97, this was ruled by Britain as a colony, but then returned to China and it has a special arrangement known as one country, two systems. Now, if you look at this map, you can see this is the whole Hong Kong special administrative region. You can see Hong Kong International Port being here. One very important thing that you can see is it's being surrounded by Guangdong province. So that is something that you can remember. And this is very, very important for the perspective that there was a lot of protests and they are continuously yet happening. So this is Hong Kong and vicinity. Let's move to the next point. And now we come to Wuhan, again, China. Now we all know it's very much in news because of the coronavirus. And Wuhan, you can see, is in the hinterland of China. It's here. It's in the Hubei province. You can see some of the important other areas like Shanghai is here, Macau. We just now talked about Hong Kong. Macau is also one of the specially administered regions. Tibet is also there. Then you have the neighboring countries like South Korea and all here. Now, because it is so much in news, there might be a chance that there might be a question on Wuhan. So let's have some idea about Wuhan. Now, it is the capital and it is a very, very major industrial and commercial city of this Hubei province. So this is something that we should remember. Along with that, we should remember the rivers that are here. It's on the confluence of two river, one being Han and another being Yangtze. We already know that this place is in news because of the coronavirus. So let's have an idea about this. It's the capital and a major industry along with commercial city of Hubei, Shang province of China. It's at the confluence of these two important rivers. Do you remember Yangtze? It's a very important river of China. So now let's move to point number 16. And this we come to demilitarized zone of Korea. Again, something which was in news last year, mainly because of the fact that President Trump had come over here, who would be coming to our country. And by the time it would have been released, he would have already done his visit and would have gone back and we would have seen what all pacts he would have signed. So you can see Trump had gone here. So he was the first US president who had set his foot in North Korea. Now remember, first US president, when I'm saying first sitting US president, that is while he was US president, he set his foot. So what happened was he had crossed this demilitarized zone with the leader of North Korea, whose name is Kim Jong Un. And Mr. Trump had gone to meet this man. This demilitarized zone, as you can see in the map, is the area which divides North Korea and South Korea. You can see North, you have the North Korea with its capital at Pyongyang and South Korea with its capital at Seoul. And between them, there is this two kilometer demilitarized zone. 
as you can see it's very very close to Seoul only around 60 kilometers while it is around 210 kilometers from Pyongyang this is from one coast to the another coast and what happens here is that this is totally demilitarized but then just besides that that is besides this two kilometer buffer both the sides there is a lot of fencing there are a lot of guards and almost no human to human movement can happen between these two areas mainly on account of the fact that a lot of landmines and all those things are there and a lot of safety features have been adopted here now here we can just give you some idea that this demilitarized zone is here since 1953 when the Korean War which was being fought between 1950 to 53 had come to a halt but then remember no treaty was signed only an armistice was done so basically because no treaty was signed technically this war never came to an end so that is something that is very very important you have to remember and remember this is all along the 30th parallel so this is something that you can remember rest of the things you can ignore but then this was in news because of mr trump who had come over here so you can see u.s president mr trump had met north korean leader in this zone which is between the two koreas and it marks the 1952-53 Korean War and let's move to now the 17th place Bougainville now as you can see it's in the far east this is a small island and why is it news because of the fact that it had voted to become independent from Papua New Guinea now you can see Papua New Guinea another country in the eastern half it's in the north of Australia and this small island of Bougainville has voted that they want to become independent now basically this small area it's an autonomous region of Papua New Guinea and here last year in 2019 around November December a referendum question was asked that is whether they wanted more autonomy within Papua New Guinea or they wanted independence and people overwhelmingly had voted for independence so this is something that you should remember small island in the far east of our world so let's move to 18th point and now we talk about Chagos Islands dispute again this place was in news last year because UN had given six months time to UK to return these set of islands to Mauritius and because UK did not return it within that time frame to Mauritius UN said this occupation is an illegal colonial occupation by UK so now this is the context in which this place was in news last year but then this dispute is a very old dispute as you can see in the map the Indian Ocean archipelago that is this Chagos Islands they are an archipelago in the Indian Ocean and they have been at the center of decades long dispute over Britain's decision to separate it from Mauritius in 1965 and to set up a joint military base with the US on Diogo Garcia so do remember another very very important place here only this is Diogo Garcia which is a US military base so now understand what happens is in 1965 Britain has separated this from Mauritius three years before Mauritius was gaining its independence in next year it gave these islands to US for 50 years and deal was extended for 20 more years in 2016 so when the deal was coming to an end in 16 it was extended for 20 more years and now the deal is that is this whole islands would be under the control of US that is it would remain as a US military base for now till 2036 Previously what happened was between 1968 to 73 around 2000 of the Islanders they were evicted mostly to Mauritius and Sicilies. By 19 that is by 2019 around 10,000 of Chagosians and their descendants were divided between Mauritius, Sicilies and Britain. Between these three countries these people have been divided. So if you look at this if you look at the world map we are here to our southwest we have Mauritius and you have the Chagos Islands almost to our south. You can see in this Chagos Islands, this is around 55 islands where there are many atolls. There are great Chagos Bank. And within that, you have this, which is the Diego 
Garcia, which is now totally a US military base, having its harbors, airstrips, etc. You can see UN had given UK six months to return the Chagos Islands to Mauritius, and it's a US military base. Moving to 19th, and this is Bhashanchar Island. It's in our neighborhood. It's near Bangladesh. In fact, it is in Bangladesh. So why is it in news? You can see Bhashanchar, it's the proposed island for relocation. Now, relocation for whom? It's for the relocation of the Rohingyas who have come to this place, that is Bangladesh, from Myanmar. And Bangladesh has chosen this island. Now, you can see it's a relocation camp for Rohingya refugees. This is an uninhabited island. It's on the mouth of river Meghna. So you should remember these very, very important. You can see some of the important towns like Chittagong being here, Cox Bazar being here. Now, two things that you can remember here is that this is going to house almost one lakh refugees. At the same time, this is a very ecologically fragile area and environmentalists are of the view that this is not the best place because this area is prone to disasters like floods, erosions, cyclones. So all this may happen here. Let's move to the last place for this lecture and this we come to our country Mamlapuram. In the state of Tamil Nadu, this place last year was hosted by our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi for the reception of Chinese President. Now here, the second informal summit was done. And remember guys, where was the first one done? It was done in Wuhan in April 2018. So you can remember Wuhan was there where we had done our first informal summit. That is first informal summit between Mr. Modi and the Chinese president was done in Wuhan. The second one was done in Mamlapuram. Now what's the importance of Mamlapuram? It is a UNESCO's World Heritage Site. Here there are seven to eight centuries Hindu monuments are here. It's a very important religious center of Hindus and it was built by the Pallava king Narasim Varman, one who was also known as Mamla and based on his name, this town got the name as Mamlapuram. So if you look, you can see the second informal summit after the first which was held in Wuhan. Another, we have already said, it's a UNESCO's World Heritage Site. But then one thing may come to question, why was this site chosen? This was because this site, Mamlapuram had Chinese connections. So how was this Chinese connection? The Pallava kings of that era had the trade and defense relations with the Chinese rulers of that era. The idea behind this was this relation would keep in check Tibet from growing as a very powerful nation in those years. Along with that, there is one more connection that is Bodhidharma. He was a very famous and a very popular Buddhist monk in China and he was believed to be the third son of a Pallava king who had traveled from Kanchipuram via Mamlapuram to China around 527 AD. Finally you can see this is a place which is almost on the coast of Northeast Tamil Nadu on the Coromandel coast of the Bay of Bengal. So these were the 10 places that we had to discuss in this lecture. I hope these 10 places which were important from the perspective of IER but then you can see in the last one there is some amount of art and culture, some amount of history also interrelated. So this 10 places would be very clear to you. That's all from this class. Thank you. Goodbye.